Now, The Fox Files presents Healthy Living. Local health experts answer your questions and keep you up to date on the latest in health trends and technology. Bringing the health advice you need to prime time, it's Healthy Living, live on The Fox Files. Hello, welcome to The Fox Files. I'm Chase Ambrose, and tonight's topic is what separates Atlanta prosthetics and orthotics from their competition. The phone number is 478-741-5510. We'll get to your calls in just a moment, but first, let's meet tonight's guests. Joining me tonight are Robert Carey and Todd Laster of Atlanta Prosthetics and Orthotics. How are you gentlemen? Very good. Chase, how are you? Very good. Well, you, you heard the topic is what, is what makes you different, so let's go into that. What does make you different? Well, first of all, uh, the company is Atlanta Prosthetics and Orthotics. Uh, a misnomer is that we are actually you know, an Atlanta company, but we are a, a Macon company. We opened up our clinic here in Macon on Walnut Street uh, last spring, and we've been servicing patients and, uh, in the community since then. Um, so the, what mainly makes us different, uh, I think, is the, uh, the ability of our practitioners, Robbie is our, our local prosthetist here in the Macon area, to really uh, cross the bridge early with patients to understand what some of their specific goals are. Um, you know, we get patients from 9 to 90, uh, and we want to make sure that we are in line with some of their personal goals and lifelong goals. Uh, and the way we do that is we address the patient or the customer. Um, very, uh, you know, we address the emotional issues. Uh, front and we also do the clinical issues so it's kind of a, a combination if you will to psychologically um, you know boost a patient who's lost a limb because it is a very traumatic experience uh, and to let them uh, you know feel comfortable in our environment um, and feel like they can have a you know a conversation with our prosthetist Robbie mm -hmm. to help understand and it's a team effort um, and I do say uh, that a lot of people don't know they have a choice to, in the L&P companies um, I, I would tell you know any amputee to um, you know, be close to the clinic that, that's servicing you. It's, you're going to have a lot of visits and make sure that you're, you're there a lot. Um, and so make sure it's a close proximity, but more importantly, make sure you get along with the prosthetist and you yeah. guys are on the same page uh, and you're comfortable uh, with, your, with your treatment. So I think, uh, you know, our methodology speaks to that, uh, that we don't even treat just the clinical side, but we really try to make sure that Absolutely. we emotionally know the person and know what some of their goals are. And you, as you said, the misnomer of the name being Atlanta, yes. <laughs> you, you have more than just the, that location and the making location, too. Though. Yes, Chase, that's correct. We have seven locations across the state of Georgia. Uh, we've been servicing uh, customers and their families since 1999. And uh, we have the footprint to take, uh, you know, Atlanta, the, the, uh, the uh, specialness that we have, the, what we do, to the outer lying ancillary markets. Uh, of, uh, of Georgia. Uh, we're just a Georgia company, we're a private company, uh, and we don't have that big corporate oversight to kind of tell us what to do. Um, we know what's right and we do what's right by every patient, and every patient is unique, and that's another thing. Um, we don't cookie cut or anything. Uh, everything is, is uh, geared to the patients to have a good outcome when they come to APNO. So what's the process when someone comes into the office and, and they've had an incident and they need, need a prosthetic? Absolutely. Robbie could probably speak on that a little better. He's, uh, he actually you know, deals with the patients hands-on. Um, so you know, it could be trauma. I mean, you know, I hate when that happens, but obviously uh, we're an we're avenue if you lose a limb in upper or low extremity in trauma. Or it could be someone who has diabetes for a number of years and has to have a, a Absolutely. amputation. We, uh, we do, do uh, offer free of charge basically um, a you know pre pre uh, surgical counseling um, we get them in there and we actually go over you know prostate devices what might suit their needs if they do have to you know take a limb off you know most of the time this is trauma or someone's trying to save or salvage a limb and they're focused on 26 surgeries you know or an amputation so we do that but basically you're Four to six weeks, maybe eight weeks sometimes, we put them in uh, compression, a uh, shrinker of that sort, um, get them, uh, get the limb steady, get it stable, and then we'll actually, you know, with the doctor's prescription, we'll go ahead and cast them and actually start their uh, prosthesis. And uh, we, we're running a little short on time in this plot, but when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about the actual process of casting okay. and, uh, and how these things are made. But with, with that, we need to take a quick break. Don't go away. Fox Files will be right back. Welcome back to the Fox Files. Now, before we went to the break, we were talking a little bit about the, uh, the prosthetics themselves. Now, how, does, how are they cast and, and how, how do they get fitted? Well, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of ways to go about it, but I'm just going to break it down for like just a transtibial or a below knee okay. um, patient. You know, typically we'll go in after we've done the compression 
therapy on them and we'll use plaster repair. It's actually <coughs> rolls of plaster um, used to make the cast out of when you had broken something. But uh, we wrap that on and we actually use a vacuum bag, the latex bag that we pull over and put it under vacuum so it actually will, will bring it in tighter around the limb. And what it does then is defines all the bony prominences that are in the limb. Um, we can actually then still have our hands on it and actually adjust or, or, or mold around those, those bones. So after, after that's done, we pull that cast off so we have an absolute mold of the patient you know, with us. And we pour it full of plaster repairs, liquid. And then we can take it off with a pipe and all and we can actually then modify it. And what we do there is do like a global reduction you know, in certain circumstances that we take off around the bones, we try to, we're trying to attain pressure throughout the socket and not just in two or three places. But we can't allow too much pressure to be on the bones. So we do a check socket at that point, which is basically plexiglass. It's a socket made out of plexiglass that we can actually look through. So being a new patient, they can actually see where they're touching you know, how hard they're touching. And if they're feeling something that's not right, we c we're able to view it to make sure it's not too much. You know, 15 years ago, we didn't have that luxury. Couldn't see through the socket. But uh, once the check socket's done, we'll do a dynamic um, alignment or fitting on it. We'll actually walk the patient and optimize the alignment, and then we'll pour it, you know, put it in a jig, transfer it out, pour it, and then we actually have their uh, definitive socket. You know, whether we want a graphic on it, we want to camouflage it, or we can just do it uh, by skin tone. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, one, one of the things that you wanted to get into was the peer visits. Let's talk a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, Chase, you, you let off the, uh, the segment by saying, uh, you know, how, how, what makes APNO different? And we have a lot of these... Um, these programs that we that we have for, for amputees, new amputee patients, um, and uh, part of that is uh, is the support groups we offer. We have support groups that are led by um, a, a peer, a certified peer visitor from the American Coalition of Amputees, and uh, essentially there are support groups in every area. We're still uh, in the early stages since we're very new to this area of building that support group up, um, but there will be more to come on that about future healthy living segments we're going to be doing. Uh, but that's one area of it. But the second area is going to be the peer visits. Uh, the same um, people I told you about, the ACA certified counselors, they're, they're able to, uh, when we, uh, scenarios, when we receive a new amputee patient, um, the peer visitor would actually go to their bedside and, uh, you know, they can hear it all day long from people like us who actually have two functional, you know, limbs, but to have someone there who's an amputee themselves to say, hey, you know, it's the same gender, uh, either an AK above knee amputee or a below knee amputee, have the same diagnosis if they are, uh, it really helps um, them psychologically early on saying, hey, this is something that I can do. Uh, it's something that, you know, this person has done. Here they are giving me early, um, you know, early support. So that's another layer. And then the last thing is a very specific thing we do with APNO uh, customers. Basically what it is is all new amputees from one month to three months, we all invite them back into our clinic here and they have pretty much a, a meeting and they talk about, well, what are some of the things that you're seeing early on? And some of these people who are three months into their device can really, you know, reflect back on when they were, you know, newly amputated, had a new prosthesis on, and really gain a lot of ground there and, and really cover a lot of ground and understand, you know, what are some of the things that are coming up the pipe immediately uh, for them. So it's really a, a really uh, dialed in support group. It's very appropriate and we, we really see that we're getting really good outcomes in this. And this all speaks to the holistic approach uh, that we're talking about, not just treating, you know, and building a device for someone who's going to be durable and keep them safe, but also we're going to be treating the emotional aspect of that, the psychological aspect. Talk a little bit about uh, how important this sort of support group situation is because this is something that someone that has not gone through it right. can't possibly yeah. imagine. You can you can sympathize but you can't really empathize unless right. this actually yeah. happens to you. Well we understand early on that all humans be all human beings require a support system. Uh, it's very important whether it be your network of friends, your family, uh, e even your practitioner. So we want to fit 
into that piece, even your physician, it's a team approach. We want to fit into that piece and do our part to the best we can. And the way we do that is quality assurance. And one of the biggest things we do is the prosthetic meetings we have. These guys, I think there's 12 of you guys now across yeah. the company, something like that. Um, so what they do is every Monday they talk and they say, well, what are some of the newer products you're seeing out? Are you seeing good results from that for your patient? Uh, what are some of the patients saying about some of the, the new knee or the new foot that you got in? Um, so they kind of, uh, you know, collaborate and uh, they come back even stronger that week and have yeah. new technology in their mind and they know what's working for people around the company. As I said, we have seven clinics, so we see a, a variety of different amputee patients. So uh, I think the quality assurance program is there to, is to make sure that you know we're doing our job and our piece of the puzzle, like I said, to fitting to the team approach. Make sure that we're on the newest edge of technology, make sure that we're on the leading edge of everything that's coming out because prosthetically has grown over the past 10 years, it's phenomenal uh, how much it's grown. Um, and you can thank our good men and women overseas for that. Um, the R&D that's gone into the research development, that is, that's gone into the um, prosthetic devices is phenomenal uh, as of late in trying to help some of our veterans. And what are some of the new technologies that you are seeing? I imagine this is, as you say, for, for years and years and years, there was, you had your wooden hand and, or, or, what, or whatever. <laughs> yes. And, and, now, and then it kind of went to plastics, and now you have plastics and metals that, that have pivot joints and, yes. and things well, like we're that. We're using space age materials in our stuff. I mean, stuff they use on the space shuttle. I mean, you know, titanium, um, you know, all of the, the hardest materials. Um, and I'll let Robbie speak on that. He handles these materials every day, and he has a couple of newer products that we. Uh, have kind of used and got some good outcomes on patients. Yeah, just two, just two in particular are the compass system and sensor tech. And basically, to break it down, the, the compass system actually will measure quantitative data on, you know, just gait patterns. It's like having a mobile gait lab, like, you know, they have, the, the Veterans Administration had, it, they'd spend twenty to $100,000 on a gait lab. This right here is in the, on the leg, and I can use Bluetooth to actually, you know, figure out to optimize the alignment. So, used to we could do it with the wrenches, mm -hmm. adjust it and all, but now we we can use computers to uh, actually aid us in that. All so. right. Well, with that, we're going to go on and take another short break. Stay tuned. Fox Files will be right back. Welcome back to the Fox Files. You wanted to talk a little bit about patient manuals. Yes, uh, thanks, Chase. I just wanted to let it be known that you know our we're, our location is 869 Walnut Street. Uh, Macon, Georgia, and uh, we have uh, some patient manuals that basically just go over anything O and P. O and P would be, you know, orthotic, orthotic bracing, any kind of orthosis that would brace bone. Uh, prosthetics, obviously, is a upper or lower extremity artificial limb. Uh, but essentially, uh, what this is, it's a guide. It's uh, for for new patients uh, that you know, obviously, have never gone through anything like this before. It could be simple as something as a, a knee brace or something as advanced as a microprocessor knee. But these are free at the uh, at our clinic on Walnut Street. So if anybody would like to have more information, uh, come by and see us. And Robbie's there most of the time. Uh, and you know, we can we can chat with you a little bit. How much? Uh, how much, if any? input into the new uh, new prosthetics or robotics having as far as like you know the the, the ultimate goal yeah. of having the robotic hand or the robotic leg well most of that is coming down from our military you know and uh, DARPA working on certain things well we did a uh, myo arm last year um, for the VA and it was a treat um, it's it's really really getting where they're they're working on senses now as far as touch and the ILM's out, you've got all five digits, you know, moving <coughs> independently. Um, it's, uh, you know, like I was talking about the compass and the sensor tech, you know, now, now they've got, we've got sensors that are just very, very tiny to be able to measure pressure in sockets, you know, upper and lower extremity. So, you know, <coughs> the technology since the mid-80s, but probably the late 90s is when it really started booming. And uh, where, where do you see this going as far as the tech? I mean, do you think it's realistic to, I, I hate to call a Star Wars reference, <laughs> but you know, to, 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 to have the full-on robotic arm? Um, I think with uh, what they're doing overseas now, they're trying to, they're actually doing osteointegration where they're actually, you know, drilling in inserting it to bone, you know, and adding the prosthetic device instead of going over the limb. Um, 
I don't see, I, I really don't see full robotics for what you're talking about. Um, but I see assistive robotics. There's the new one that just came out. Um, just the, just, uh, I think it was the CBS News, uh, I think last Monday. And it is a powered foot. And actually it's, you know, it's got servos and motors and actually assist the user. So it's actually knocking energy expenditure down for the patient, even though it weighs probably four and a half pounds, they're not really feeling it because it's, it's more of a fluid motion in their gait. Let's hit on, hit on the website real quick. Uh, yeah, thanks Chase. Uh, www.atlantapo.com. I encourage um, everyone to go there and, and take a look at it. You can uh, learn more about our practitioners in the area or statewide, and you can also learn more uh, about who we are as a company. Um, and uh, you know, really read some patient um, patient studies and patient stories we have on there um, from you know from pediatric patients all the way up to our geriatric patients and all in between. But um, you know, when when you choose our company, just to kind of go back to the first thing, um, you're choosing a company with experience, and you're going to choose a company that's going to have a total commitment to you as a patient. Uh, and we want to be there for you. We want to make a lifelong friend out of you. Um, you know, people do business with people they like and they trust, and we want to earn both of those things um, from our from our patients. Well, we've got a little less than a minute. Final thought? Uh, we're happy to be in the Macon area. I yes. mean, this is a great town. Um, I'm not fortunate enough to live here. I live up in the Atlanta area. Uh, but, you know, Robbie has, is showing me this wonderful town, and we've opened up the business here. And we just want to be a thriving part of the community and assist, uh, you know, families uh, and, their, and their loved ones any way we can. And yes. be a part of that is, is what we like to do. All right. Well, with that, we are out of time. If you'd like to contact a guest from tonight's show, you can reach Atlanta Prosthetics and Orthotics at 478-238-6464. Tune in next time for another edition of the Fox Files. For our guests, I'm Chase Ambrose. Now stay tuned for It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and we'll see you tomorrow at 5.30 and 10 on Fox 24 WGXA.